Talo Valava, my name is Monty Betham. You are watching One to Warrior. My guest today is one of Grand Final, and he's on his way to 250 NRL games. 46 of those were for the club. Chad Townsend, thanks for your time, brother. Thanks for having me, Monts. Great to be here. I mean, how are you, man? I mean, you're, you're still carving. You're playing really well. Yeah, mate. Still enjoying it. Still loving it. It's been uh, it's been a hell of a journey in my career. In my 13th season at the moment. Uh, a couple of seasons at the Warriors when I was a little bit younger and half a stint uh, towards the back end of my career. But, yeah, still living it. Still loving it. Um, well and truly on the roller coaster and uh, just trying to make the most of uh, you know my time left in the NRL. Chad, big numbers on the field, like I said, uh, you're in your 240-ish games. And then big numbers off the field. Four kids, man, what's doing? Yeah, mate, my wife and I have been busy over the past couple of years. Uh, she's one of four. She's got three brothers. So she always kind of wanted a big family and something we spoke about uh, pretty early on. So we were kind of like, let's just get them out. Uh, bang, 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 bang. So well, they're about uh, 18 months apart. I've got three girls, one boy. Um, yeah, so very, very blessed and have a busy household, but um, we love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you love it, man. And this is something that your kids might love too. And it's uh, memories of dad carving up in the jumper. And that's straight through goes Townsend. Townsend. Oh, Townsend. Townsend. Beautiful pass. Townsend. Oh, he's done it again. Delivers it to Townsend. Townsend will score for the Warriors. Townsend has gone through. Townsend to skip away. Townsend's away from Pierce. Jack puts a step on Tomas Shek. Townsend looked in fail. Jack Townsend. What a year he is having. Uh, when you watch those highlights, man, what, what thoughts come to mind? Man, uh, great, great memories. So I've got a lot of great memories in the Warriors jersey. I've got a lot of great mates who I'm still friends with today. Um, you know, really grateful for my time at the Warriors and and looking back on some of those highlights, uh, yeah, fills me with um, with awesome memories. So, you know, I've got a lot to, 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 to thank the Warriors for with regards to, you know, how my career sort of kicked off. I mean, you say it left good memories with you. You left a lot of good memories with a lot of people. Still to this day, people talk about Chad Townsend and what he brought to the club, which, which is huge, man. But when I think about your career before you came to the Warriors, you didn't play the Warriors and you didn't play in New Zealand. So um, how did it come about, man? Crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. Look, in my, I made my NRL debut in 2011 with Cronulla and uh, played 11 games. And then over the next two seasons, I was kind of um, in and out of first grade. I had a couple of injuries and I uh, came to a point where I was off contract and I was looking for a fresh start. So I kind of said to my agent, uh, mate, I'd, I'd love to just move on. I want to move to a different club, but I want to stay at Cronulla. I want to look elsewhere. He came back to me and said, mate, there's, there's two clubs who are really interested in you. One of them is the Warriors. What do you think? And I was like, I would have been 21 at the time and I said um, it was kind of like make or break for me to kind of take the next step in the NRL and really solidify myself as an NRL player. So uh, then I uh, went for a meeting with Matt Elliott, who was the coach at the time, and he kind of said to me that, hey, you know, we, we can't guarantee that you'll be starting in the halves next season, but what we will do is give you an opportunity that if you work hard, you train hard and you play well, there's a spot there for you. So um, it was mainly just around me sort of getting out of my comfort zone and being challenged as to the reason why I wanted to choose the Warriors. I sat down and spoke with Matt at the time and, and Dean Bell, who was a recruitment officer at the time as well. And, um, yeah, they had just such wonderful things to say about New Zealand. I went over there, had a look at the facility. I don't think I saw a bit of sunlight the whole weekend that I was there. But, um, yeah, look, I was really impressed with the facilities, uh, the resources, the sponsors, the club. I made the decision uh, to change countries, to move to New Zealand. Uh, it was the first time of me like moving out of home. Uh, obviously, you know, run and learning all the bills and all that paying <laughs> rent and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it, it helped me grow up and it also helped me, you know, really focus on on my football and, and get me out of my comfort zone and really challenge me. So, yeah, I ended up making the decision that hey, you know, this is this is the one that's going to challenge me the most, and this will this will well and truly make make me an NRL player or, or won't. Absolutely, man. Now, there was only three signings that year, so there's two others that came with you, Sam Tompkins and also Jason Bakuya. Did it make it easier that your teammate Jason Bakuya was coming over? And when did you know? Uh, was it a secret or did your you plot to come together? No, yeah, kind of. Um, he had signed with the Warriors before myself and obviously we, we played a lot together at the Sharks and 
Um, I'd asked him a, a whole heap of questions that he was kind of really speaking really highly of. And then I think it was about a month or two later, I made my decision to, to go over as well. So, you know, it kind of happened separately, but having uh, Jason or Boogie, as he's well known to us over there, you know, was great for me. Obviously helped me settle in a lot. Uh, and you just mentioned Sam Tompkins as well, a, a world-class player with a lot of experience and having him potentially as a teammate. Um, he's someone who I grew really close with uh, during my time with the Warriors. We still speak, uh, you know, now nowadays. But, um, yeah, love my time with those two, that's for sure. The lure of playing alongside SJ, um, how huge was that? I mean, um, maybe if SJ wasn't there, you would have changed your mind. Yeah, it was huge. Obviously got a lot of, lot, a lot of love for SJ and played a lot of football with him. Um, but at that time... Yeah, he was uh, one of the top tier playmakers in the competition, and you know he, he still is to this to this day. I, I love Shawnee, and um, the way he played the game was was unreal. And I knew that I could, uh, I guess, unlock him and help him the way that I played my football. So um, yeah, a lot of my strengths re- re- revolve around you know short kicking game, um, talk, communication, and you know getting my you know other spine members in areas where they can execute their their strengths. So you know, that was something that appealed to me to playing with Sean. And obviously, we're, we're pretty similar age, Shawnee and I. He's, you know, uh, one year older than me. But, uh, yeah, that was another appeal as well. Just someone, you know, going through the same thing and at the same age. And anyone who knows Shawnee knows how, you know, easygoing that he is. He's a very, very team-oriented guy. He loves getting around the boys. And... You know, I've been lucky enough to know Sean for a long time. Uh, obviously, you know, first played together in 2014 season. And then obviously, you know, when Sean, had that stint at the Sharks, we played together. So I ended up, I've played about five seasons with Sean. Um, got to know him really well, both on and off the field. Uh, we, we have a lot of banter. We're very competitive with one another, uh, whether it's at training and kicking duels and um, or it's on the golf course. Yeah, it. He's someone who uh, I've got a lot of time for, and speaking on it as a as a mate and as a friend, like I'm unbelievably proud of the way he's played this year. And I think you know last year, you know I, I would speak to him quite regularly because I, I I knew that he was living in Queensland away from his family, and you know the struggles that that brings, obviously mentally, and and you know really getting down on yourself, and you know not potentially not playing your best, and. I saw that fire in his belly about potentially, you know, wanting to finish strong and, and play well because when Sean finishes, he'll go down as one of the greatest playmakers of all time. You were there in round one uh, for your debut. What do you remember of your debut? And, um, you know, that's the first box that you took to say you meant business. Yeah, definitely. So that was my goal moving over there to play round one. I'd, I'd never played a round one game before in the NRL. I'd played three seasons previously, but not a round one game, which... You know, to me, in my eyes, means you've had a great preseason. You've ticked all the boxes, and you know, I guess you're almost the starter in that position. You'd say so. For me, that was what I had my eyes firmly, firmly on. And uh, I remember when I found out uh, from Matt Elliott that I was playing, I was just over the moon. I'd absolutely trained my backside off over the summer. Um, I'd sacrificed a lot, dedicated, um, you know, my whole life, everything I'd ate to to just get me in that position where I could play in round one. And I remember I got my jersey pre- presented to me by my dad at the hotel in Sydney uh, before we played Parramatta, which was a really special moment. And, you know, unfortunately, we went down that night. Uh, but, yeah, it was a moment that I'll never, ever forget. Talk to me about a big man who you don't normally see on a short side, Fui Fui Moi Moi. He popped up and uh, made sure that he was going to welcome you to first grade in your new colours. I'd actually forgot about that. But, um, yeah, looking looking back at it, it was... Uh, it was a big task taking on Philly uh, at any time of the day for anyone, but let alone a little halfback. So, yeah, just try my best. And, you know, I always say just you get in front and you have a go, and if you get bumped off, you get up and you try and give it another go. So, yeah, just try to put my body on the line. But obviously, you know, Philly gets one over me, which is, uh, which is not that uncommon. But it got made a little bit more difficult when you had to transition to a new coach early on. Um, the comparison between the two coaches, was it um, more fun being coached by an ex-halfback? Yeah, it was uh, It was a big spanner, to be honest. Obviously, I'd, I'd made the decision and signed with the Warriors, uh, assuming that Matt Elliott was going to be the coach. And he was sacked, I think, six games into the first season that I was there. So... Uh, Andrew McFadden, Cappy, as everyone knows him, stepped into that role of of head coach. And 
I owe Cappy a lot. He is someone who really changed my game. He was very hard on me, Cappy, but um, I still speak very highly of him this day because of the amount of time and effort he put into my game. And, you know, I could just tell that he really wanted me to have success. And um, him being a, an ex half back as well, you know, it meant a lot to me that he gave me his time. And, you know, I still, to this day, I owe Cappy a lot and I really, really enjoyed being coached by him. So 19 games in the first three years of NRL, but yet in your first year at the Warriors, you played 19 in the one season. What, why do you think that was? Um, I was very focused on, on my football and, you know, I was really enjoying my time. And I was just each week, just I didn't want to give that opportunity to anyone else to play. I was like, I just want to go out there, give it my best and, you know, Try not to give anyone else an opportunity to play because, you know, I wanted it bad and I, and I needed to show it. So each performance, I knew that I hadn't really locked myself in as an NRL starter yet, but I had to prove myself each week. So you know, I put a lot of pressure on myself. And, you know, if, if we lost games, I was really down and and I was hard, hard on myself because, like I said, I, I didn't think I'd, you know, cemented myself as an NRL player just yet. So, you know, I went through some tough times, but also some really good, times of, of personal growth and, and understanding what it takes to, to play in the NRL week in, week out. Yeah, I have no doubt you're one of those players that when you're in the change room, they look across and they see you and they feel more confident about uh, getting the result. Uh, who were those players for you and why uh, in your time in, in the club? Really excited to play with actually Nathan Friend. He, he had a really big impact on me at my time at the Warriors and, you know, like I said, I was still probably, I think I was 21 or 22 when I moved over there and Friendy was obviously you know, a veteran, and he was very, very hard on us as a, as a group and with our training standards, and he was just super ultra fit. And, you know, I, I backed myself as, you know, someone who was fit, and but I just couldn't catch Friendy. I just gave it everything I had, and you know, he was the benchmark. He's the fittest person I've ever seen. And I just wouldn't try and make it my goal to try and beat Friendy in some of the fitness drills, and no matter how hard I pushed and how close I got to him, he would always get me in the end. and But I used to try and just basically copy how professional he was. He was always stretching. He was always preparing. He was writing notes in his notebook. That's probably why, you know, he lasted so long in the NRL because he was so fit and so, you know, just so, so mentally strong. Um, the one that really stands out was Simon Mannering. And he was the captain at the time when I was there. He was a great leader. He used to just lead with his actions. He would turn up every single week and, you know, the gap between his best and worst game was very, very small. So he was ultra consistent, ultra professional, and he's someone who I really, you know, looked up to and had a lot of confidence in. And, you know, there's a couple others. You know, Ben Madalino at the time was, you know, a phenomenal player, gave a lot of confidence to us. Just, the, you know, those senior guys, hardened guys who, you know, were just NRL. That's just what they did. They turned up every week. They got their jobs done. They were consistent. And that's why they were playing, you know, you know, many years and, and had long careers. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to play in the NRL for a long time. And, you know, I learnt off those, got those type of guys. I mean, we've all seen the try assist from uh, Nathan Friend through the legs. Uh, I mean, it all comes down to obviously the kick that you put up. Uh, what do you remember of that night and, and that try? Because it's one of the greats and there's been some great tries in the colours. Yeah, there has. I didn't really probably understand the impact of that until I saw it on ESPN. I think it was Sports Center top ten plays, which which means you've made it. So, yeah, I remember putting the kick up uh, off the sideline to like the far post, and at, at the time I thought, oh geez, it's not close enough to the try line. And Friendy, you know, all bloody four foot of him got upstairs, and you know. Obviously, it was last play, so he's trying to keep the ball alive, throws it between his legs, and then I think it goes to Sean, to Sam, and then I think Tui scores in the corner. So we're obviously just cheering because it's not something you see every day, friendly getting upstairs and throwing the ball between mm. his legs. But like I said, once it was on once it was on ESPN, um, Sports Centre Top 10, you know, you know you've made it. So great memory. You, you could score a try yourself, mate, and uh, you're a bit before your time or ahead of the time too because what was this? Yeah, well, I, I used to get asked that actually at, at the time and, you know, many people are kind of understanding what it is now. There's a new documentary just come out on Netflix, Untold, Johnny Manziel. And at that time, 2014-15, Johnny Manziel was playing college football for Texas A&M and, you know, he kind of got the nickname Money Manziel and he used to celebrate with the money and the fingers. So, uh, uh, you yeah, know, live as it was happening, I was a big fan of Johnny Manziel and, 
you know, just copied his celebration there for a bit and not many people knew what was happening. But now, I guess, you know, all these years later, there's a doco out on him and people are kind of understand a little bit more about him. But, yeah, been a, been a fan of him since day one, boys. Don't worry about that. <laughs> you do owe Cappy a lot, but if you had taken up the three-year deal that he tried to give you when you wanted to move to Sydney, you wouldn't have been a premiership winner, man. Yeah, so, you know, some people may not know, but, you know, I... I'd signed a two-year deal at the Warriors, and in that second year, uh, my mother-in-law had been diagnosed with bowel cancer. So, you know, she was having to have some radiation and some treatment back in Sydney. And uh, my partner and I, we made the decision to that we wanted to move back to Sydney to be closer to her. And we hadn't, you know, had a had a club lined up or anything like that in Sydney. It was more just sort of having that initial conversation with Cappy, and I always you know, like to be pretty forthright and honest and, and open with how I'm feeling and just went into Cappy's office and said, mate, uh, this is the current situation of, you know, um, what's happening outside of football. We kind of want to make a decision to move back closer to family. And and then um, Cappy said, mate, well, I'd love you to stay. You know, I, it offered me a, basically a three-year deal on the spot to stay. And, you know, I said that I'd go home and think about it and, you know, we, we did think about it because I really was enjoying my time at the Warriors and, yeah, uh, made the decision that, you know, we, we were going to not take on the threes at the Warriors and move back to Sydney. And then, yeah, the Sharks, uh, my previous club who I'd made my debut at, um, were keen to get me back and, yeah, sort of met with them over the next month and then ended up signing back there for, for two years. And I think I came back to the Sharks after my stint at Warriors, you know, a lot clearer with my game, uh, what my strengths were, for me, it was about that time on the field and in games that I really, really learned. I really, really grew. You know, my decision making on the field was a lot clearer because of the experience that I had on the field. So, and I really just wanted to build on my strengths and be the player who I wanted to be. Obviously, there was a lot of emotion for me at the time. You know, made the decision to move back to Sydney, back to the Sharks. Um, you know, just I left New Zealand and I left the Warriors with a lot of love and a lot of the gratitude for the jersey and the club. Uh, your favourite games in the jumper, you know, 46 times you played, so which one's the ones that come to mind that you loved? Uh, yeah, I'd have to say, um, obviously my debut one was special, that we, which we spoke about before. I remember we played a Parramatta one night at home at Mount Smart. I think it was a Saturday night. It was dewy and I think we pumped them like 50 something nil and it was phenomenal um, I remember there was a game we played I think uh, against the Raiders at Eden Park which we put a score on them and also I remember playing the Raiders in uh, at GIO where I think Manu scored three tries so yeah I've got a lot of great memories in the jersey I mean, there's a couple games there that, that are a highlight for me so um, yeah always really cherished my time there well they were grateful for you when you came to the rescue um, well what you try to do in terms of being Calvary and returning 2021. Um, man, I was happy when you were coming back and I said, you're the man, Chad. Uh, but unfortunately, that bloody shoulder early on, I remember watching the game and going, no. How did it eventuate coming back? Yeah, it was uh, it was a little bit odd, to be honest. 2021 season, I'd started with, with the Sharks and I'd made the decision to, you know, um, not take up my option and sign a three-year contract with the Cowboys. So... Uh, yeah, that was pretty early on in the season. And then uh, it was a couple of weeks after that, I got dropped after kicking a golden point field goal. And it was like, it's time for me to move on. I just need to get out of uh, where I was at. And I spoke to my agent. He made a few phone calls. And then all of a sudden, I got a phone call from Nathan Brown saying, mate, we'd love to have you for the rest of the year. Um, come in, just give us some direction and a good kicking game. And um, help us out and I was like mate I'd love to I've got a lot of love for the Warriors jersey mm. um, it'd be an absolute honour to pull it on for the rest of the year so I moved to Terrigal which what I thought was um, going to be for the rest of the season that's obviously where the Warriors were based and you know the weird time that was COVID and you know spent two weeks in Terrigal and then played my first game and my very first touch of my very first game uh, I think it was Tarek Sims hit me as I kicked the ball, which would have been a flat-out penalty and 10 in the bin now, yep. nowadays. But, um, yeah, absolutely crushed and uh, popped my AC, grade 3 AC joint. So I I stayed on the field, which was a dumb decision. Uh, my head was just spinning for the rest of the game. And 
Yeah, it was unfortunate. Monster was um, – I, I really had great intentions of going there and finishing off that rest of the half of the season, you know, but I was just a shell of myself. My shoulder needed just time off and rest, and um, it really, really hurt me because, you know, I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I felt useless and had a lot of a lot of challenges mentally to try and get over it. You know, you got to go through the lows to appreciate the highs, and, you know, while it was a, it was a bad time for me, um, you learn a lot. And you take a lot from it because you want to bounce back and fire back. So um, it's just a part of the journey, Monster, as you know. The comparisons to them being at home and being happy to being in that crazy time, that bubble in Terrigal, you know, what was what was it like, man? It was crazy. It was, uh, you know, obviously just being on the move, not knowing what was going to happen tomorrow was the wildest thing. And, you know, that was a really big challenge for, for the Warriors on the road. And obviously I was... You know, able to see a little bit of a glimpse of that through the six months that I was there. But um, I think, you know, if I was to compare that last six months in 2021 to my time in 2014-15, it's just, it's not comparable, Monty. Mm. It is, you know, you imagine that your your whole life living out of a suitcase in a hotel compared to living at home with your family, with your kids in school, with, you know, the support networks around you. Like, you know, because obviously we're, NRL players, you know, throughout the day, but then we go home, we're fathers, we're brothers, husbands. So there's a lot of life outside of football that, you know, people don't really see, which as a teammate, you know, you can see how your teammates are going. Three great clubs um, and no doubt you're fond of all three, but in terms of the Warriors, how was that unique uh, to uh, the Sharks and to the Cowboys? Yeah, I think um, the biggest thing with the Warriors was culturally. And um, I was, like I said, I was really, really keen to, learn and understand the Warriors culture and you know we would go to a Marae and we'd learn about the Maori heritage and the Warriors they do such a tremendous job of bringing all different cultures together like whether it's Aussies, Samoans, Tongans, Maldives, um, Englishmen like you know uh, they do a great job of mixing and, and understanding you know who each person is where they come from and I remember walking in and, and seeing you know the, the culture knives that they would have and and all the different cultures just sort of swarmed into one. And uh, that's one thing that the club does really well, regardless of who's there. They understand who they are. They understand what they're about. And um, that was something that was really special and really will stick with me for a while. Your summation of your experience at the club in those uh, two years and a little bit. Yeah, I think, you know, looking back on it now, and like I said before, I, I have so much love and gratitude for the Warriors. They gave me an opportunity to fulfill my NRL dream to kickstart me and to push me into becoming a cemented NRL player week in, week out. And that's something that I will hold and cherish for the rest of my life. An opportunity is all you can ask for as a young kid. And they gave it to me. So I met some wonderful people both in my team and, and in and around the club and, and around Auckland. And um, yeah, they're memories that will that'll last with me forever. Chad, once a warrior, always a warrior. You are a great of rugby league uh, with all you've done. And we're very grateful that you gave a service of 46 games in the jump on my man. Thanks so much for having me, Monty. Much appreciated, mate. I'm Monty Beatham. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next week for more of Once a Warrior. And that's straight through. Goes Townsend. Townsend. Oh, Townsend. Townsend. Look in fair.